Welcome to Schloss Leopoldskron and the Salzburg Global Seminar. My guest is taking part in the Salzburg Health and Healthcare Seminar Series, and this first session is on reforming healthcare. Fiona Godley is editor-in-chief of the British Medical Journal. It would seem to me, Fiona, that with 29 countries represented here, um, they must have very different healthcare systems from one to another. Do you see that there's a kind of one case fits all when we talk about reform? I think it's unlikely we'll come up with a one case fits all. What's interesting is that actually the problems people have are in many ways very much in common, that, that there are many similar problems across a very wide geographical spread. Um, and each country has come up with its own solutions. And um, I think that we will learn a lot from each other in this week of which solutions can be adapted, um, which can be um, learnt from in other settings. Presumably in the British Medical Journal you have a lot to write about um, the British healthcare system and it seems to me it is often in being reformed. Too right. <laughs> and we're in the midst of another reform at the moment, a major reform. Um, I think uh, what's interesting about the British system is, is it is the only system of its type, funnily enough, with the, the, com the completeness of the, um, the NHS coverage across the population um, is, 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 is unique, I think, in the same way that America is, is the only healthcare system of its type. And we tend, certainly from, from my perspective, to look at the UK and America. Um, and there are so very many other approaches to healthcare and to healthcare reform that uh, we absolutely must break out of this UK-US conversation and look more broadly across the world. Are there any that you would hold up as a particular role model? Well, um, I think bits of different, bits of all systems are, are, are admirable. And, and even in the States, we've got some very good examples, the Mayo and Kaiser. Um, the, the Netherlands, I think, has an interesting system of competitive provision and competitive commissioning, which is uh, unusual. Um, I know that the French uh, system is very uh, popular with patients because it allows access to specialists and to primary care, and the patient chooses, um, but maybe problematic in other ways. So there are, there are, there are systems which have grown up, and um, it may be quite hard for other countries to adapt fully because they're all evolving in their own direction. What's interesting, I think, is countries who are just beginning to establish their health systems should be in a position to pick and choose from the best. Um, and that may be something that this, this meeting can help to encourage. Is this your first visit to Schloss Leopoldskron? It is my first visit. It's marvellous, wonderful to be here. Well, I'm very sorry to have to tell you that across the lake, if you look across the lake, you will see a tall, rugged mountain. That's the Untersberg. And you will soon be leaving this alpine palace and abandoned on the top of the Untersberg. However, you will be able to take three works of art, literature, or entertainment with you. And I wonder what your first choice might be. Well, I, I rather like the idea of being abandoned on a mountain with, with things to read and, and to watch, so I, I won't be too distressed, provided I have some shelter. Um, but I've chosen two novels and one television series. Um, so I'll start with I mean, I can tell you what they are. So the, the novels are The Middle March by George Eliot, Madame Bovary by um, Gustave Flaubert, and a television series which only those in the UK will know about called Doc Martin. Um, so if I begin with the novel, would that be? Yes. So I chose Middle March by George Eliot because it's a book that I've read quite a few times um, and has left me uh, always wanting to hug it and wanting to hold it and read it again. Um, and I think it fits very well with the whole idea of healthcare reform because its main character, Dorothea, is um, a, a sort of passionate reformer and wants to do good. And being born into a relatively well-off family and looking for a role for herself in life, she, she seeks out rather a, a harsh path of marrying a rather unappealing clergyman, trying to help him with his reforming ideals. Um, and in the background, those of you who know the novel will know that there is um, the rather a romantic Dr. Lydgate, who, um, who makes a problematic marriage himself, 
and, um, and the struggles he has to try to bring innovative ideas into the local health area. And then, of course, Dorothea finds romance um, uh, elsewhere through another romantic character. And, and, of course, since I'm a romantic, I like the idea that she does find happiness. Um, but it's a book that I've read in, in different settings. And once I read it, in fact, I think it was the first time I read it, I was living in a mud hut in Kenya, and I had malaria, or didn't know it that I had malaria. I was ill in bed and was feeling rather feverish and reading this book in that rather unusual setting and has left me with a very strong impression of the text and the people in it, so. And your second book? The second book is um, Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. I did a degree in history of medicine um, in the midst of my medical training and um, we were asked to take a, a piece of literature and, and write about that and I did my thesis then on this book. So I, I know a lot, well I did know quite a lot at the time about Gustave Flaubert's life and, and his father was a doctor and he grew up in the Hotel Dieu um, which was the sort of local hospital and saw a lot of very gruesome things and his father wanted him to be a lawyer but he himself had epilepsy and for a range of reasons sort of dropped out if, if you like. Um, but he, left, he was left with a very mixed view about doctors and Madame Bovary is full of quite caustic portraits of doctors and um, the mistakes they make and the uh, professional uh, co uh, rivalry between the doctor and the apothecary and the doctors coming in from Rouen and Paris who are bestowed, you know, endowed with greater prestige and, and the country doctor is a rather sort of bumbling, um, pathetic figure and the wife you know, disdaining him as a result and, and killing herself. So, I mean, I think doctors come across as a very mixed bag in Madame Bovary, and, and I'm rather intrigued by that. Would you say this is also true in real life? Absolutely. I think, it, I think it, although it's a very harsh portrait, I think, I think there's a lot of reality in it. And um, I think that as doctors, we need to be very alert to our failings and um, to the um, incentives, the motivations, uh, which are prestige and money, as well as... Uh, trying to help patients. Um, that's always been the case throughout history and I'm sure will continue to be the case whatever healthcare reform uh, does to change things. And what about Doc Martin? I always thought Doc Martins were shoes. Yes, Doc Martins are shoes, but there's this series in, in the UK television called Doc Martin which stars Martin Clunes, who I rather like, who um, plays the part of a surgeon who has a, a phobia against blood, so he has to re- uh, in, become a, he, he stops being a surgeon and goes to become a country GP down in Cornwall. And um, his, he's a very, very brilliant doctor. You can tell that he's fantastic at, at diagnosing things, but he's absolutely hopeless at communication and is, is very rude to his patients. And, um, but, but, you know, it's that contrast between an extremely good technician and an extremely competent doctor and uh, his absolute inability to communicate in a way that is... Um, compassionate and, um, and um, engaging with patients. So I think, again, that, that uh, how do we train doctors to be both those things and uh, how do we, how do we uh, encourage better communication between the primary care and the specialist care. So I think it's a very funny series, very engaging, but it has lots of other messages for health uh, professionals and reformers. Now, in the event of a blizzard, you will probably find this a little cave where you can take shelter on the Undersport, but you'll only be able to take one of those works with you. Which one would you take? Well, it'll be Middlemarch, because it's a long book, so I'll have a lot to read, and I haven't read it, and I think, probably now for 15 years, and it's um, a book that I'm sure there are bits of it that I must have skipped through, the, 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 the more reformy uh, political bits I probably skipped through when I first read it, so I think that will give me lots to think about, and... Uh, I love George Eliot's writing, so I'm sure I'll be happy reading that for a good few weeks. Fiona, thank you so much for being our guest on The Winter Spoke. Thank you, Tina.